Hello, my name is Tierra Cottonkello, and this is Roots Tech 2021 session ID number 471448, when the children are telling the story. Today, I'm going to share with you a very special present my way case study that examines what can happen when the information that you've obtained leaves you with more questions than it does answers. What you'll find during this presentation is that the majority of the brick walls and the answers that ultimately lead to their breakdown were both created and revealed by children. Let's begin. This research scenario began for me during my first solo trip to North Carolina in May of 2017. I was attending a national conference, researching at the North Carolina archives, and visiting with my dad, who lived not too far from Riley. During one of our conversations about this side of the family, I learned that I had an uncle but not just any uncle, a great, great uncle who was not only alive and well, but living less than an hour away from where we were standing right at that moment. This conversation sparked an impromptu road trip. And it was so exciting because the circumstances worked in my favor to allow me the opportunity to not only meet him and interview him, but to be given a DNA sample as well. Meet Uncle Kurt, otherwise known as Curtis Marsh, my father's mother's uncle, better put, my grandmother's uncle. Our conversation that evening covered a range of topics about his life and his upbringing, but none of those details stood out more to me than the information he provided about his parents. He shared that he was the last living among his siblings and that he was the second youngest of his parents' children. His father named John Henry Marsh, his mother, Annie Floyd Jane Irene Adlai. Don't believe me? Listen for yourself. Now, Uncle Kurt informed me that his mother, Annie, had lived to be 102 years old, and I felt that that was a great person to start with in trying to do some more digging in this family tree. Fun fact for the North Carolina researchers, death records were created and collected for the state of North Carolina beginning in the year 1913. They are currently available online through 1979 at the State Archives of North Carolina. Birth certificates, while they were requested, were not required, and general compliance wasn't had until 1920. This puts us in a bit of a situation considering Annie is thought to have been born about 1892 in Chatham County, North Carolina roughly 21 years prior to when the Chatham County Register of Deeds began recording birth records. But we're going to keep in mind that researching women and maternal lines, no matter the time period, can be a daunting task for most researchers. Annie Floyd Jane Irene Adlai of North Carolina is no exception. A few searches for Annie yielded no results and left me puzzled that she couldn't be found anywhere. Sometimes there just isn't enough information and you have to take your search in another direction. That's when I decided to change my focus away from finding Annie and began to search for her husband, Uncle Kurt's father, John Henry Marsh. The first documentation that I came across was the death certificate of John Henry Marsh. According to this document, he died on the 30th of June in 1960 in Bear Creek, Chatham, North Carolina. His death certificate information was provided by his daughter, Thelma Reeves of Bear Creek. She cited him as being married to Annie. So if this death certificate is accurate, it attests to Annie still being alive in 1960, or it shows that he married a different Annie altogether. While the surname was quite common in the Chatham, North Carolina area, John Marsh was much easier to find than his wife, Annie, who according to the 1940 census, wasn't his wife at all. I was able to find John Henry Marsh in the 1940 United States Census in Gulf Township of Chatham County, North Carolina. That's where Annie should have been. However, the census enumerates what appears to be a 14 person blended family. While this family is made up of both Marsh and Cotton surnames, each member of the household was reportedly born in North Carolina and living on the same farm that they had resided on five years prior. The head of the household is listed as John Henry Marsh, age 52, born about 1888 in North Carolina. His son, Curtis Marsh, yep, Uncle Kurt, was six years old at the time and is listed in the census along with his sister, Canis, three brothers, Walter, Willie, and June. Also residing in the home were four stepbrothers, indicated as such by the census, George Cotton, Alton Cotton, Harold Cotton, and Edward Cotton. 
There are two Marsh granddaughters residing in the home, Helen and Mazer, and one Marsh grandson, Glenn. Although Curtis and his father, John Henry Marsh, are documented and accounted for, the wife in the census is not Curtis's mother, Annie, as it should have been if the death certificate had been correct. I found Nellie Marsh enumerated instead. Nellie's name at first glance on the census appeared to look like Kelly or two first names, but it was transcribed as Mrs. Nellie Marsh. The questions then began to form in searching for Annie. Was she already deceased prior to 1930? And if not, why was she not enumerated with her husband and children? Is Nellie an alias for Annie? And if so, how would she have become known as such? In continuing the search for John Henry Marsh, a 1934 marriage license of a J.H. Marsh and an Annie Cotton is found in the Office of the Register of Deeds in Cumberland County, North Carolina. The information that can be deduced offers a wider view into Annie's life. This marriage certificate was dated the 28th of June in 1934 and shows a J.H. Marsh of Bear Creek, North Carolina, applying for himself to be wed to an Annie Cotton of Cumnock, North Carolina. The marriage license lists the parents of the groom, Henry and Polly Marsh, both deceased, and the parents of the bride, Alice Pashal, living as of 1934, and M. Pashal, deceased. J.H. Marsh lists himself as being 47, Annie Cotton as 42. The age listed on the marriage certificate suggests that Annie was born about 1892 in Cumnock County, North Carolina. We were able to ascertain from the given Cotton surname that this may not be Annie's first marriage. The names of Annie's parents are provided, naming her mother as Alice Pashal living and her father, M. Pashal, deceased. This certificate also confirms that J.H. Marsh's parents are Henry and Polly Marsh. This marriage certificate established a potential added connection between the Marsh marriage to Annie Cotton and the Cotton children living in the household of John Henry Marsh and Nellie during the enumeration of 1940 in Chatham County, North Carolina. There is a discrepancy between the spelling in Cotton, C-O-T-T-O-N, and Cotten, C-O-T-T-E-N, spelling within the census, but given the often phonetic spelling choices of the enumerators, this is close enough to a match to deduce that these may be Annie's children. The 1930 U.S. Census of Gulf Township in Chatham County, North Carolina, enumerates the household of John H. Marsh and his wife, Nellie, transcribed incorrectly as Willie. Included in the home are what appear to be their 10 children, Cammie, Clyde, Susie, June, Fanny, Thelma, Walter, Lottie, Willie, and Helen, who was only a few months old at the time of the enumeration living on their farm that was owned outright, working their own land. A comparison of the two households, the Marsh of 1930 and the Marsh of 1940, reveals alignment with regards to the names, dates, and ages of the household members who would have still lived at home after reaching the age of marriage and or maturity, providing evidence that this is the same household. Due to not finding Annie as the wife of John Henry Marsh in the 1930 United States Census, a single search for Annie Cotton is conducted, and she's found in the 1930 U.S. Census, enumerated with a different husband, Charles Cotton. In that enumerated household, you'll find Charlie Cotton, his wife Annie, and their children, James, Clarence, Jesse Lee, George, Lillian, Harrell, and Glenn. This enumeration shows that Annie was only 17 at the age of her first marriage. The comparison of the Cotton household from 1930 and the Marsh household from 1940 reveals alignment with regard to the names, dates, and ages of the household members who were living in the Cotton home prior to becoming part of the Marsh household as of 1940. Here you can see that George, Allen, and Harrell, now Harold, fit the ages and spellings of the children who would be in the household. Finding the 1930 U.S. Census enumeration for Annie Cotton and her family lends reasonable proof that Nellie Marsh and Annie Cotton Marsh are not the same person. Doing a little digging into Charlie Cotton, I was able to find his World War I registration. Although he didn't list them by name, Charlie Cotton, of the correct estimated age and birthplace, confirmed having a wife and three children under the age of 12 years old on his registration card, dated the 5th of June, 1917. 
While he stated that he didn't know his exact date of birth, the additional information is corroborated in the 1930 U.S. Census. He and Charles Cotton were enumerated in District 10 of Gulf Township in Chatham, North Carolina in 1920. In that census, you gain a picture of Annie and Charles nine years into their marriage, living on a farm that they owned, working alongside each other, raising their four children. In the census, you'll find Charlie Cotton, age 29, Annie, age 25, and their children, James, Clarence, Jesse Lee, and George. The census lists her birth date as being about 1893, which aligns with dates mentioned in marriage certificates and census reports. A marriage license was applied for by Sidney Cotton on the 18th of December in 1911 for the marriage of Annie Pashal and Charlie Cotton. The marriage license was returned, stating that they were wed on the 26th of December, 1911, at the Pashal home, thus providing evidence of their union that took place in Chatham, North Carolina. Unlike her wedding to John Henry Marsh 23 years later in 1934, both of Annie's parents, Minor and Alice Pashal, were living and potentially in attendance. They were married by Minister J.H. Williams in Matthews Township and in attendance were W.H. Price, J.W. Stedman, and J.H. Marsh, her future husband. So what I was seeking to do was to find out how Annie was connected to these Cotton and Marsh individuals. And I see that it's obviously clear through the children who are listing them every chance that they get as a person who will always know where they are. For example, her sons, Clarence and George, listed their mother on their World War II draft registration cards. The 1942 signature date of the application confirms that Mrs. Annie Marsh was not deceased in 1940. I was able to use death certificates for two of her children, Glenn Cotton and Lillian Cotton, to confirm the names of their mother, Annie Pashal Cotton Marsh, and father, Charlie Cotton. While documenting the death certificates of Annie Pashal Cotton Marsh's children, it was noted her daughter Lillian Cotton married Clyde Marsh, the son of Annie's second husband, John Henry Marsh. Had they not married, they may have more than likely appeared on the 1940 U.S. Census together in the same household as stepbrother and sister. On their marriage application, dated the 28th of March, 1939, it's noted that the father of the bride, Charlie Cotton, and the mother of the groom, Nellie Marsh, were both deceased. This answers the question as to what happened to the dissolved marriage of Annie Pashal Cotton and Charlie Cotton, as well as the marriage of John Henry Marsh and Nellie Marsh. The death of Nellie Marsh is found as of January 1935 through the North Carolina Death Index. To date, her death certificate has not been located. This brings back the option that it was, in fact, Annie Pashal Cotton Marsh, who was enumerated in the 1940 U.S. Census, with her cotton children living alongside her in the Marsh household. It is very likely that there was either an error from the individual providing the information or a misdirected question of parentage from an older child of Nellie's. Evidence has been gathered to pursue the search of Annie's parents to tell her story. Based on the information provided from the two marriage certificates of Annie Pashal to Charlie Cotton and Annie Cotton to John Henry Marsh, it's reasonable to deduce that she was born in 1892 in Cumnock County, North Carolina, to Minor Pashal and Alice Pashal of North Carolina. Annie married Charlie Cotton in 1911 and had children. After his death, she married John Henry Marsh in 1934, and the two had children combining their family unit. While there was no death certificate located, a death notice has been found that lists the obituary of Annie Cotton Marsh. It also lists Curtis Marsh as a surviving son. When the children are telling the story, there are no guarantees. It's all 50-50. Annie Floyd Jane Irene Adlai does not exist. However, those additional names may fit into a part of her life that was never documented, one that we'll never know about. Uncle Kurt put us on the only path that he had, and we used his clues to find Annie Pashal Cotton Marsh, a real and documented individual who was only found through following documentation of the lives and deaths of her children. So when the children are telling the story, you should listen. Thank you.